So welcome back, ladies. Um, I guess it's been a week now between Violet and me, <laughs> although it's just a few minutes for us. <laughs> <laughs> Same club. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm just glad that you're back with us. It's, I'm still so happy that that you are watching us, and I pr appreciate those of you who have come to me and, and told me that you've, you've watched it and that you enjoyed it, and that mm -hmm. means the world to me, and I thank you again. Today I'm going to be, the, the title of this is Seek My Face. Isn't it true that you began each day in exactly the same way every day? Especially if you go to work, to school, or get family off to work or school, you have a routine that works for you and you pretty much stick to the routine. Some of my earliest memories include my mother waking me up to go to school. Of course, the younger I was, the easier it was. I would get up, get dressed, and go to the kitchen where I had the same breakfast every day. A fried egg with a runny yolk on top of a slice of fried toast and a piece of bacon mm -hmm. and a cup of hot tea. That was my breakfast every day. No exceptions. As I got older and getting ready for school required a little more time, I would sometimes have to skip that breakfast, but nevertheless, it was sitting on the table waiting for me. That was just her routine. And of course, over time, my life saw significant changes, but for the most part, I maintained a routine. Getting up for school or work often meant I skipped breakfast. However, I always did the same thing, the same way, every day. After marriage and after my family started to grow and I had children going to school, once again, I had a routine. Routines just made my life easier. And when you have to get four kids off to school, mm -hmm. your tasks become like an assembly line. <laughs> You would open and clean out each lunchbox from the day before. Then you would lay out eight slices of bread. And then this one required mayo, this one was mustard, this one was both, and this one was nothing. <laughs> and then it was like you put meat on all four sandwiches. And then a couple of them liked the cheese, a couple of them didn't. So you had to remember cheese, cheese, no cheese, cheese. And then it was the potato chips, the Fritos, the Doritos, the Cheetos, Little Debbie Cakes, Star Crunch, Nutty Bar, Oatmeal Cakes, Swiss Roll. There were years this, of this until thankfully we had school lunches. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. But through it all, we still lived a routine. Now, did you notice that nowhere in that scenario did you hear me mention reading the Bible or praying? as part of my daily routine. Can you imagine how much easier my life would have been if reading God's word or talking to him in prayer had been the first thing I did every day? Of course, you know that if you clothe yourself in the Lord at the beginning of each day, you're better prepared for whatever the day brings. It is through knowing God intimately that you become like him. This requires spending time along with him you need to seek God's face. So what does it mean to seek God's face? Many times in scripture, God's people are encouraged to seek the face of God. A familiar verse declares, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. And that comes from Second Chronicles 714, and you probably all know that one. But if we can't see God's face, then how do we seek God's face? The Hebrew word for face in the Old Testament is often translated presence. When we seek the face of God, we are seeking his presence. The call to seek God's face was issued to his people because they had abandoned him and needed to return to him. A person's face reveals much about his or her character and personality. We see the inward emotions of a person expressed outwardly on their face. 
We recognize a person by looking at his or her face. In a sense, one's face represents the whole person. In Psalm 105.4, God's faithful ones were called to seek his face always. Even if we have not abandoned God, there are times when we neglect to pursue him. God's face, his holy character, is often obscured by our human condition and fleshly desires. That is why the Lord urges us to seek his face continually. The Lord desires to be our constant companion in every experience of life. He wants us to know him through and through. If we draw close to him, God will draw close to us. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. And that is from James 4, 8, and that is the New Living Translation. When we approach God in prayer, we are seeking his face. Who may ascend the mountain, the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. And that is from Psalm 24, 3 through 6. The true nature of worship is to seek God's face. The Christian walk is a life devoted to seeking God's presence and favor. The Lord wants us to humbly and trustingly seek his face in our prayers and in our times in his word. It requires intimacy to look intently into someone's face. Pursuing God's face is the equivalent to developing an intimate relationship with him. O oh God, you are my God, I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. That's also the New Living Translation, Psalm 63, 1 through 3. Having God's face smile on us is an expression of his blessing, love, and favor. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. That's Numbers 625, also New Living Translation. And I'd ask you also to reference Psalm 80, verses 3. That's Psalm 80, verses 3, 7, and 19. When we draw close to God, we are blessed with his shining favor. We do not pursue him only to give him a list of wants and needs because God is already aware of what we need. And that's from Matthew 6, 7 through 8 and 32 through 33. We trust that he will take care of us. There are endless obstacles to avoid when seeking God's face. We must learn to get around them in order to see him clearly and so that we can be in the light of his presence. We must flee spiritually dulling activities. They are blocking our way. We know what makes us vitally sensitive to God's appearances in the world and in the word. And we know what dulls us and blinds us and makes us not even want to seek him. These things we must move away from and go around if we would see God. This is what seeking God involves. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Isaiah 55, 6. And Job 8, 5 says, If you will seek God and plead with the Almighty for mercy. That's, that's just the A part of that verse. Seeking involves calling and pleading. Humility is also essential for seeking God's face. Psalm 10, 4 says, In the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. The great promise to those who seek the Lord 
is that he will be found. If you seek him, he will be found by you. And that's First Chronicles 28, 9. And when he is found, there is great reward. Whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. God himself is our greatest reward. And when we have him, we have everything. So now back to what I said at the beginning of this commentary. You need to clothe yourself in the Lord at the beginning of each day. Mm -hmm. Do this by seeking his face, his presence. Put him on and wear him. The sooner you put him on, the better prepared you are for whatever the day brings. Make this a part of your daily routine, preferably the first part. He will make your routine feel not so routine at all. Mm-hmm. And my um, memory verse challenge is Psalm 105.4. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Wonderful lesson, Kathy. And I wish that uh, I could have applied this earlier in my life. Me too. But when we were, you know, when you're so busy raising a, a children and you've got you're pulled here and there that is just something that was hard to kind of slide in there but I know. you can always you can always make time that's right and I've learned to do that now that's right that's right and I'm telling you it has really made my days a, a whole lot different it is doesn't it make a difference I love to I love to just be riding down the road and think I don't really have anything that's bothering me that's today right. I don't have any worries today <laughs> you know and you say that, and I just told Bill, Sunday I think it was, I've noticed something about myself during this kind of social distancing thing. Mm-hmm. I have so much calmness in my spirit. I do too. And it's just like that maybe the Lord had used this time to calm me down. Mm-hmm. You know, and things that used to bother me, not so much anymore. You know? I think that's, I think that's very yeah. true. I don't know. I, something good came out of it for me. Well, and and I spent too many years of my life worrying about stuff. Oh yeah. And I don't I don't worry about stuff anymore. I had Doctor Enoch tell me one time when I was in, and we were really going through a bad time with my son when he was in the drugs, and he said to me, "I want you to read Matthew chapter six every day for a month." Especially the part about worrying. He said, because what does it say to God if you worry all the time? That's true. That's true. He said, you need to read. And I did. I read it every morning before I went to work. It made the biggest difference in my life. Because things that I worried about, all I had to do was just give them to God. You know? And And that's... That's odd coming from a doctor that's telling you that. <laughs> He's, he was that's very, what you want to know about your doctor. He was a very fine Christian. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, but he, he was serious. He said, mm-hmm. he said you're going to die before you're 40 if you don't get it together. And that's true. That's true. I mean, and he was just, he was matter of fact about that. He said, and your son, it's not going to bother him. <laughs> you know, right. which I'm sure it would have. But what he was saying is, you trust God, then let him right. take care of this. Right. And just look for him. Just look for him in every Absolutely. single thing you see during the day. Isn't that the truth? Just know that God is there and he's mm-hmm. present there with you. Mm-hmm. And it's that is such a wonderful feeling. Well, and, and I think it's so true what you said that we have to seek God's face and we have to do that. Um, it has to be a planned thing. I mean, it's like an appointment, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. I don't answer the phone when I'm doing my Bible reading. Right. You know, I told you I, I do my early morning stuff, and then I do my really in-depth stuff out on the deck in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. And and I don't answer the phone. I don't take my cell phone out there with me, and Bill doesn't come out there and bother me mm-hmm. because that's my time, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And, and I was reminded when I was looking at this after you sent it to me how God tells us we need to earnestly seek him and we will find him that's that is so true and to and to, to make it part of your daily routine i mean it was kind of 
you know, I started off with making things a routine, mm-hmm. and then you go into seeking your faith, seeking His face, but that needs to be part of your routine. That's right. And that's what I was trying to get at is that, you know, unfortunately for a lot of us, that is not part of our, our daily routine. And first thing in the morning is probably when you need to seek Him the most. Exactly. It just makes your whole day better. Exactly. In fact, before I ever got up this morning, I was praying over you and I that we would be protected, that God would put the hedge around us like we always do yeah. and when we pray with each other like we did today. But, I mean, God wakes me up sometimes and I have to get up because there's something He's trying to tell me. Mm-hmm. And I've learned to get up yeah. instead of rolling over and saying, we'll talk about it in the morning. <laughs> no, I'll get up now, Lord. Now's the time. You know? it is. But Yes, but you're right. And, of course, I also had to laugh. This is, this was cute when you were talking about the little Debbie cakes. <laughs> um, I love the little Debbie cakes. I do, too. I don't eat them very often, but I love them. And I just had to laugh when I saw that. I thought, mm-hmm, people after my own heart. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know... <laughs> You, you 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 have to take all four of them with you to the grocery store. Of course, one time so they can all tell you which one they like, and Absolutely. you had to get each one different oh, so yeah. you would keep them separate. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and that was that was fun days too. You know, it, it's it it was a chore to get up and have to do all that stuff oh, in the morning. Plus, get their breakfast. Plus, make sure that they're ready to walk out the door at the right time. But it was it was still fun. Well, I'm and I told you the standard breakfast that I fixed for my kids was oatmeal that you cooked in the morning and Candace would say oatmeal again (laughs) it's good for your brain yeah you know that was my standard thing and now you couldn't pay her to put oatmeal in her mouth (laughs) I I love oatmeal (laughs) this was a great lesson Kathy well thank you very much thank you I read it over and over after you sent it to me and I just I thought Lord this is just right on it and we need this so much today people need to realize they need to seek you and and, you know, the world tells us so many things that are so contrary to what we know is right. Yes. And, yeah. You know. But so. I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's amazing. when God puts something on your heart, and it's like, why are you giving me seek my face? Mm-hmm. And then that's why. That's right. All right. Thanks, ladies. As always, we, lo- we love having you here with us. And we're going to close now in prayer. Father God, I just thank you so much for showing me that I need to seek your face every day. I I pray, Lord, that everyone can start their day seeking you, putting on your presence so that their, their day will be made better through it. I thank you, Lord, for all the protection that you have just flooded us with. We are just so fortunate to be a part of your kingdom. Lord, I just, I thank you for all of your blessings. Every day, every week, I I thank you for blessing us in all of the ways that you do. I just pray, Lord, that you will continue to be with us here as we are uh, still attempting to, to, to deliver a message to people that, Hopefully, we'll, we'll see it, hear it, and we'll apply it to their lives in some way. Continue to bless our church, our church family, that are so very, very special. Yes. We just love you, Lord, and we, we just ask forgiveness of our sins and forgiveness for where we fail you so often. In your precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen.